Okay, so let's hear it for Center Stage, everyone. Let's welcome Amanda Shaw, star of Center Stage, and San Francisco's own Lady Camden. Okay, 25 years. I know. How did it hold up? How did it hold up, Amanda? So it's been 25 years since you've seen this. Yes. Um, a little shock. Uh, were you surprised at how fabulous it is still? I felt a lot of things. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> is it a little bit it. like seeing your high school reunion video in some ways? I mean, you were so young when you did this, and it's all right there on film. It is, and my eyebrows were so thin. <laughs> um, <laughs> they all were in the year 2000. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just nerding out on this moment. I just think it's cool. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'll put it away now. I'm sorry. No, please. Amanda hasn't seen the film in 25 years. You saw it, I'm assuming, like yesterday, Camden? I rewatched it on Monday. <laughs> I think it's important to watch it once a year. <laughs> you are not the only person that said that to me. For some people, this is their Christmas movie with their kids. For some people, they like to see it around the Nutcracker. That's why it's Christmas. I hear people that say they watch it once a year. They watch it when they're depressed. What does that mean to you when, when you hear that this movie has such an important part in people's lives? Well, I mean, I said earlier before um, the movie started that it was overwhelming. And hearing everyone throughout the film, so funny. it was, I mean, this was, this is going down in the history books for me. This was astonishing. But, it was like Rocky Horror with some of you. <laughs> but... I do, I do want to mention that when the movie first came out, I had a hint of the impact it had to some people. And I'll tell you what moved me most, I think, was people coming up similarly to what you said earlier, Lady Camden, um, before we started, was that, and, and Garen Scribner as well said, I had a lot of boys coming up to me um, after the movie came out and they said, my parents didn't understand why I wanted to do this. And then I took them to the movie and now they get it. Oh. And that, that astonished me, you know. Jody Sawyer helping bring families back together since 2000. Yes. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the casting process for this. So if I'm remembering right, you were in school at right. San Francisco Ballet. Mm -hmm. Was it an open call? Was it, uh, did you have an agent that submitted you? Mm -mm. No. So um, they, uh, originally Sony Pictures wanted an actress who could dance. And um, the amazing Nicholas Heitner, who directed the movie, Sir Nicholas Heitner, um, felt strongly that he wanted a dancer who could act. And Good call. Well, he, he humored them and let them audition actresses, and they came to understand that for that particular role, they needed to have a dancer. And so they did a, a oh, I just realized I'm wearing my watch. How tacky. Um, <laughs> I got pockets. <laughs> yeah, so tacky. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, so, I, as I said earlier, I was in the right place at the right time. Um, Regina Bustillos, I don't know if she's still here um, somewhere. There she is. Um, Regina, well, I, I was doing a rehearsal for the end of the year student showcase. And um, I very distinctly remember Julia Adams saying, um, we're going to have a big fancy Hollywood producer come and watch. And when I tell you I have never performed harder in a rehearsal in my life, mm. I, I, I was doing everything I could. And um, shortly after, Regina brought me the script and she said, that woman wants to see you audition for the movie tomorrow. And so I had done musical theater. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I prepared the sides, those are the scenes that they told me to read. And I went between rehearsals, I was beat red, I was sweaty, and I read, and she said, um, okay, I'd like to also get a little bit more of you on tape. She gave me another scene to prepare, and it was the role of um, Ava. 
Oh. No, pardon me, it was Maureen, excuse me, it was Maureen's role. It was Susan May Pratt's role. And I that said- That would have been different if you had been Ava. Well, I, I said, I said to- It would have been a very different film. Yeah, that it would have. I, well, <laughs> I, I remember distinctly saying to her, oh, thank you, I like this one more. Can I have this one? And she was like, no, you don't get to choose. And, um, and then uh, from there on, it was kind of history. I, uh, I, I went down to LA and met the producers and then they flew me for a screen test and that's when I first met Ethan. And uh, then they gave me the job. There's nobody, I don't think anyone in this auditorium could imagine another Jody Sawyer other than you, Amanda. No, <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, how old were you when you started dancing? Three-ish. Three-ish, okay, so late. Um, <laughs> you said you did a little bit of musical theater. Did you do like your high school musical? Did you have a favorite role? I didn't do uh, high school musical. I did like local community theater. And yeah, community theater um, in Hawaii. And that's where I grew up. And um, one of my favorite, I was young Evita in Evita. Oh, really? Which was fun, yeah. Another hard role. Yeah, and I, and I was Dainty June in Gypsy. Oh, I bet you were a great Dainty. <laughs> so the older June, the one that sings when, um, If Mama Were Married? No, that's, that's um, Gypsy. That, that, that's um, Who's He Bucket, the other one. Oh, that's the other one. Okay. Yeah. No, I sang, let me entertain you. That so, one. You were like, so you were the young June, like the baby, baby June. No, I wasn't baby. I was, I was you, were, you were like middle June. I was okay. dainty, Tony. I was dainty. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so how long were you with San Francisco Ballet? Seven seasons. I was, I was an apprentice, and then I was with the company for seven seasons. I love the fact, by the way, that there's, I think we get three call-outs of San Francisco Ballet in this movie, and he, he gets to be with his girlfriend at the end. Yeah, with Galena. <laughs> Galena. Do you have, um, what are your favorite memories of working on the film? Um, favorite connections with co-stars, favorite moments to film? It, it was like, so we shot it over a summer, um, about four months, about a month of rehearsal for all the dancing prior, where I met the guys. And um, then we shot for a little over three months. And it was like the best summer job you could possibly imagine. I mean, <laughs> every single day was incredible. We were all around the same age. We all got a along amazingly well. And over the weekend, we'd have taco parties at my place. I mean, wow. we couldn't get enough of each other. So it was just the most it, phenomenal and encouraging and warm welcome to that world for everyone. And then, you know, getting to dance with those two guys was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, 25 years later, a little breathless still. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us were also tonight. <laughs> um, what really strikes me watching this movie every couple of years when I see it is I went to the arts high school here in San Francisco. I wasn't a dancer, but I knew the dancers and those scenes of shoes being, you know, banged in hallways and wet and slammed in doors and people dealing with bloody feet in the middle of, you know, a, a studio. Like, I was like, yeah, that's what it was like. <laughs> um, was it like being in a high school class with all of them again? Like, I loved the fact that it showed sort of the bonds of dance as much as it showed any of the little kind of backstage competitive things, which I think are less the reality. Right, no, I think that being, and I hadn't been in a company yet, so I didn't understand what that was like, but I had been in a school. I was very much leading Jody's life. And some of my closest friends are people I was in the school with, in the company with. You kind of are in the trenches together. I mean, and that's, you're you're getting to fulfill a fantasy that you've most likely had as a as a very young child, and you know it's going to be a finite amount of time. And so it's like kind of like this desperate hope and passion that you have every single day, living this dream that you know will not be there forever. And so while it's competitive for those reasons, you're also rooting for each other and encouraging one another because that's kind of the only way that you can get through it. I mean, yeah. that's ballet. Is it Maureen's line? Uh, you get 10, maybe 15 years without yes. an injury? Yes. Boy. Well, without an injury, point? what life is she living? I mean, that's... Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, get real, Maureen. Good yeah. thing you dropped out, I guess. She didn't yeah. know. No. <laughs> Camden, how old were you the first time you saw Center Stage? Do you remember? I honestly don't remember. I probably saw it around the time that it, you know, it had its first few years. 
I don't remember. But I, I mean, I went to Royal Ballet School and it was the kind of movie that would just be played once in a while in the dorms, you know, mm-hmm. or it would be quoted as well. So I don't remember the exact time, but it was definitely like a cultural, you know, thing, a part of our vocabulary day to day, you know. So let's talk about the impact in the queer community, by the way. I feel like this is one of those films, like many films about dance, about the performing arts, that's really been embraced by the queer community. Amanda, do you, so you said you have boys especially, or men that have said that this film was important as a way of bringing their family into ballet. Mm -hmm. Do you get, I don't know, like other than Camden, have there been a lot of drag queens that come up to you and tell you how important it is? First of all, there is is? no other drag queen but Lady Camden. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) No, I I, I limit my love of drag queens to Lady Camden. Um, You have good taste. Yes. No, I think that that was what was most striking to me, though, was the impact because I, as an actor now, um, I get to show, for a profession, I get to show humanity what humanity looks like. And that's something that maybe not everybody has the opportunity to go to the ballet for whatever reason, but more people get the opportunity to go to um, the, the cinema, to the theater, the cinema, well, who am I? So, um, so European. <laughs> and it's Centre stage. And so, um, anyway. Uh, I don't the drag remake is Centre stage. <laughs> yeah. right? That's a great drag name. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Centre stage. <laughs> That's your drag name. That's my drag name. Right on. (laughs) Are we breaking news here tonight about your next career move, Jody? (laughs) My drag daughter? Oh my God. (laughs) Lady Camden, what have you noticed about the queer community's relationship with this film? I I think it's a world and where a lot of queer people just sort of seek refuges in the arts. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of queer people just feel. Like, it's a safe space, you know, to be in a dance studio. I always felt like it was a safe haven from bullies, from just, like, oh, growing up in a school where people don't understand you. I didn't tell people that I did ballet at my previous school. I would hide it. I, was prote- I would tell people that I was going to therapy so they wouldn't, <laughs> so they wouldn't ask me any I, questions. You told me that <laughs> in one of the first interviews I did with you when I thought, like, that you were meant to be a drag queen. That is a great oh, cover yeah. story. Well, because as soon as you say that, they go, oh... So I literally, but then there's this freedom that when you do go to a full-time dance academy, it's just such a beautiful freeing moment where you don't, it's not about your identity, who you are, what you look like, who you love. It's about your turnout and your feet. As we learn. You know? Anyway, all that to say, I just feel like center stage is just like a really, a celebratory moment of seeing yourself on screen in a way, you know? And I think that a lot of queer people don't feel uh, up to that point, I don't think were represented on a yearly basis in cinema. So I think it was just really cool for ballet students to feel seen, you know. Talk to me about the process of actually filming dance. It's not the same thing as doing a role on stage. Um, a lot of repetition, I'm assuming. A lot of, now we have to get it from this angle. Um, what was it like? I, you know, so I, I haven't, hadn't seen the movie until tonight, so it's been 24 or five years. I was really struck by how much dance there was in the movie. Yeah. Um, But how, I mean, we got to see almost the entire Romeo and Juliet balcony pod. That's amazing. Just the fact that they allowed for that much ballet in a movie really struck me tonight. Um, And yes, to your point, we did have to shoot the bejesus out of it and it was all done at Lincoln Center on on the stage and I think we did all of that um with maybe either seven to ten days of of filming maybe maybe fewer wow that seems very short it was it was ambitious I mean we had long days I I was as I think you heard me say before I was doing those watches until three or four in the morning I could and if you notice, I come off point at the end. I could not stay up on point. My legs were exhausted. We forgive you. Thank you. <laughs> but, but what was interesting about, so now in, in um, film, there's something that's called playback, and you can really easily watch the playback um, very quickly on a, on a small monitor. Or, I mean, we also have 
a, a camera, a, a video camera on our phones, every single person does. But back then we didn't. So we would have to do the whole thing and then Ethan, more than anybody, would run down and they'd have to rewind the whole thing and wow. he'd sit there and he'd watch himself to make sure that, you know, he approved it and then he'd come running back up and nope, and we'd, he'd do the whole thing all over again. I'm exhausted just listening to that. It's a lot of running around. Um, so, 25 years later, almost, um, I have to say, I was really encouraged by the fact that this was not a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. It did seem to, um, it's not a documentary either, but it seemed to pretty accurately address some of the issues that we know were still a part of the ballet world. The body stuff I thought was pretty uh, bold for the year 2000 to confront eating disorders. The fact that we have a very openly queer character here who talks about um, why the ballet is a home for, for him as a queer person. Um, were either of you surprised at how well it tackled some of these issues? I'm really looking at you, Amanda, because you haven't seen it in a while. I know. Um, <laughs> That was the life I was living, though. So it didn't surprise me. It just reflected it, you know. And I think everyone in that, for the, it was a lot of dancers. And Sir Nicholas Heitner is, was a huge fan of dance, and he wanted it to be as realistic as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Camden, where do you rank this when it comes to the other great dance and performing arts movies that are important to the drag community. I'm thinking of Fame, I'm thinking of Black Swan, I'm thinking of Camp, I'm even thinking of a chorus line. Where do you put Dirty this in dancing? that panthe? Dan yeah. Dirty Dancing, Oh absolutely. my God, yeah, it's funny. I was actually just thinking about, um, you know, the other dance films and how, <clears throat> obviously some are really hugely successful, some are less so, but like, what I thought made center stage, and we've already kind of talked about this, is just having real, real dancers. Even the preparation of point shoes, it was, it is refreshing to see real, an authentic portrayal of what a ballet like. You know, of course, there's drama. It has to be a movie that we want to sit and watch. Because there's never drama in the ballet world. We know right, that. but it felt like finally you see that there is drama in the ballet world, and we do have like things like you were talking about the eating disorder topics, like queer people finding a home, and that topics that are important and gripping within the ballet community, so it was nice to see that. I do think in terms of where it ranks, um, it just depends on like how much you are a bunhead, I think. <laughs> and like, I was a bunhead, for, and I still have was. to say, is this and Billy Elliot were my two sort of like favorite movies. Oh God, Billy sure. Elliot, how could we yeah. forget Billy Elliot? I know, yeah. And what just uh, means a lot to me when I watch this is unlike some other dance films, I won't name names, you actually see the feet, you see people really dancing, it's not, a, a far distant shot of somebody and then like close up on Natalie Portman, oops. Um. <laughs> okay, on that note, do we have uh, time for some questions from the audience? We do have time for questions from some, do we have any questions? Okay, we have people running with mics, I see hands down here. Okay. So, um, you know, there's a saying, you have to do 10,000 hours of something to be amazing or an expert at it. And I'm just, for the first time watching this movie, and I did ballroom dance, and I'm like, Amanda, did you do 6,000 hours of work to do this movie? You were just guess. Um, the actual movie? I'm not sure. What but about the prep? For the, the movie? Well, the prep, we, we prepped for not quite a month, but I prepped my whole life for that. Film. You were three for that film. Yeah. How many hours have you done in drag? 6,000 yet? You know, I started yesterday, so I'm going to let you know how it's going. <laughs> um, but I have high hopes in you. <laughs> I can't wait. We have another question? Oh, oh, okay, runner with the microphone. <laughs> um. What was your favorite part about shooting the film? Where is this small child? <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's your name? Madeline. Hi, Madeline. Are How you a old dancer? are you? Uh, I'm 10. Do you dance ballet? Yes. Well done. Where do you dance? Uh, San Francisco Ballet. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> are you auditioning for Nutcracker tomorrow? Yes. Oh my god. Uh, Baird. What are you hoping to do this year? Uh, I want to be a clown. <laughs> Work. Same. 
break a leg tomorrow. Uh, thank um, you. What was your question, Madeline? Um, what was your favorite part about shooting the film? That's a really hard question, Madeline. Yeah, you could be a reporter, that's a I good know. one. I <laughs> know. I had a lot of fun shooting a lot of parts of the film. I think the dance was really fun to do. The final ballet was a lot of fun to do. But I think if I could really um, be sort of a general with my answer, I made a lot of good friends. And well, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Do you, have, do you have good friends with ballet? Yeah. Good for you. I'm sure you do. Keep it up. Thank you. Married tomorrow. We have uh, time for two more questions. I have a question up here, and I'm sorry, my voice is going to stumble much more than up here. the wonderful person that came before me that's much younger and has a lot more confidence. Uh, but, okay, so years ago, this was after center stage, um, my sister and I saw you in the Nutcracker, and we were so excited because we had seen you. If this is going to turn into I was a bitch to you, I'm no, sorry. No, this is, oh my gosh, 180. We waited by stage door and we're like, Amanda, and you turned around and you were so kind to us and said hello. And I mean, even then you were just the most amazing, incredible person. And this was after- Say it, more. Oh, oh, I will, I will. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, I will get to it, sorry. Just after a little more praise, sorry. Don't stop um, her. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I was an SFB growing up. I was in the ballet, I was in the party scene and then seeing you that, like, in the party scene and bringing, I didn't know how much acting you could bring to the role of nanny slash. Um, like the maid. The maid. Yeah. <laughs> you were in the back, let me tell you, I always. Was I this. working the back of the stage? Oh my gosh. And every time I watch Suits, I, anyone around me, I'm like, okay, I saw her on stage afterwards. And she brought a persona to this, this, this role. <laughs> you know, you were in the back, like working, like, are you sure you don't want to drink? Yeah, sure no. you don't want to drink? I this got was, them booted up incredible. in the party scene. But afterwards in stage door, you were like, you were so kind and so wonderful. Anyway, my question is, sorry. Thank you. No, um, don't apologize for that. Keep it going. You're in SFB, mm. incredible. You go to center stage, you have an acting role, and then you return back to ballet, and what was it like returning back to the role before going to Hollywood, and, and obviously you skyrocketed afterwards, but you, you boomeranged it back to, I don't know, like SFB is incredible and a wonderful and amazing and great, but there is a- Read her. You went, you went to movie and then you went back, and what was it like coming back to be a ballerina after being in such a incredible, wonderful m movie? Sorry. Thank you. No, please don't apologize. Thank you for it's very sweet. Thank you for all of those comments and thank you for the question. Um, and thank you for noticing me be the maid in the party scene. I mean, I don't want to say anything, but I think the maid kind of steals that ballet. I mean, I guess it depends on She's who's the working maid. Working her ass off. <laughs> Anyone can see. Yeah, exactly. um, well, you know what? To be honest, when I when I shot Center Stage, I um, I, and I'm not, I, I'm saying this with all sincerity, I did not do it thinking that anyone was going to watch it. I mean, I, it didn't occur to me that it was going to be viewed by people. It was just my job at the time, and I was enjoying myself and doing my best. And then I went back to the job I had committed myself to prior to getting the film. And that was, as I said earlier, something I knew was going to be finite. And I went into it as wholeheartedly as I possibly could because I knew it was going to be a short, short amount of time, but getting the opportunity to film really opened the door to that part of me that thought that that is what I was meant to do afterward. You know, so it wet my palate in a way, but at the same time, I knew how precious those seasons were with, with the company. I'd like to close just by asking you both what you think the ultimate legacy of Center Stage is. And I love that you come at it from such different places. We have, we have Jody Sawyer, Sawyer sitting here next to me, and we have someone, if I may say this about you, Camden, who has taken inspiration from this film in your own career. Um, what do you think the ultimate legacy is? Let's start with you, Camden. Yeah, We've got to give Amanda the last word. Statement. Um, I think two things. I think uh, the theatricality of ballet, it just resonates with so many people in a really fun camp way. 
Um, of course, we're dealing with like real sincere storylines here that are real stories that people go through, but it's just dressed up in a really fun theatrical way, and I think that's just what people have enjoyed. The, today was one of the most fun experiences I have ever had because just being in a room with so many people that relate to this film or love this film for different reasons at different times of their life in different capacities, but like quoting it together, you know, uh, I just think this film really does bring a lot of people together in different ways, not just from the ballet world. I have friends that love this film. My drag mother is sitting here and she is a, a, your biggest fan and loves this film, but and d doesn't come from a ballet world, comes from a, a drag world. So it just, it's really beautiful to see how Center Stage kind of unites a lot of people, I think, in a different, from different walks of life. <laughs> Thank you for that. I don't know if that was the right question answer, but that's what I said. Um, yes, you, you pass the, <laughs> you get a passing grade. Thank you, Camden. Amanda, what's, what's the ultimate legacy for you here with all these people who really love Center Stage? This is so overwhelming to me. I, I am pretty sure I blacked out through half of that, hearing everyone recite the lines and feeling the collective energy in the room. And I think to your point that uniting people and uniting people through art and through dance. And they, that was some, th there was some good, I'm taking myself out of it. There, there were some really good dancers and we all got to just experience that together. And I think it was a, a palpable energy and how, how beautiful that we all got to feel that with like, our fellow artists and our, our fellow man. I hope that everybody that loves this film goes to see live dance and supports mm -hmm. their local yeah. ballet, modern companies, and the Dance Film Festival. Amanda is uh, teaching a workshop tomorrow, I believe, in uh, acting for dancers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure the website has info on whether or not you can still sign up to do that. Thank you to the, dance, the San Francisco Dance Film Festival, Lady Camden. Amanda Scholl, thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, thank you. Wait, can I say one last piece of advice for the auditionee, Madison, is it, auditioning tomorrow? Just one piece of advice. Just dance the shit out of it. <laughs> How cute is she? Now go to bed. Go no, go to bed. Now go get some rest.